When people ask me, why is Eddie Nketiah starting ahead of Alexander Lacazette, your £45 million striker? This is the game that we will point to. Because this is what people are looking for. This is how you get ahead in life. You stay alert, stay safe, stay alive and work your ass off. Understand that you are an ant and your job is to work. Work while people sleep. Work until you bleed, work until you pass out, and then, and only then, will you get your just rewards. Grown men getting lessons from children. How can a man possibly look this calm when he hasn't scored an away goal in 18 hours of football? This is for the ones who can. What's going on, people? Welcome back to another video. My name is Hugh and you're watching 90 more. Back again, we're breaking news for that air. So you're all doing well. Make sure you uh, subscribe if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen. But for now, the mentality at this club is something that is rightly questioned on a daily basis. From the very top to the bottom, it is filtering through. And that is, I guess, why we're playing kids. That is why no team has had more goal scorers aged 20 or under in the Premier League this season. They're hungry. They've got it all to prove. And they will listen to Arteta. Three points from three games. We needed a win today. For my sanity, peace of mind and blood pressure. Because I know it's been all doom and gloom. But all is not lost. We are still in with a chance. There is a chance that we can still qualify for Europe and save some pride. Why am I doing that? I don't know why I'm doing that. It's not going to happen, is it? We needed a hero and in stepped Alex McCarthy, Southampton's goalkeeper, with a wonderful bit of hesitation that cost his team dearly. Now, if you think back to October when Leicester smashed the absolute living out of this Southampton team, 9-0, and Hassan Hoodle's job was potentially on the line and they were almost dead certs for relegation, they have certainly turned things around. And even though they haven't come away with the result today, even though... Their form, I think, is actually a bit dodgy with defeats against West Ham and Newcastle in their last three games. They actually played quite good football. And I think that much is encouraging for Southampton fans. But for Arsenal, game management is what I was most impressed with today. And while they did have the majority of the ball in the second half, the job was kind of done and it's on Southampton to make the move. And I kind of like that. But I'm not going to gloss over the fact that I think... The three points are slightly deceptive here. Yes, they're necessary. Yes, it's fantastic. Yes, it's a movement in a positive direction. Maybe even clawing your way back into the race for European qualification. But ultimately, we weren't very good. And even Aubameyang, who is so reliable, has now gone four games without a goal. Very unlucky not to score himself. A great save, I think, tipping the keeper's thumb onto the crossbar but he should have been scoring that and it left me thinking that the most impressive performances of the day from Arsenal players were from Robert Holding and from Emmy Martinez. Slightly worrying times with more players going down. Saka looked like he was injured for a moment and I held the breath and of course we welcomed back Granit Xhaka to the side. Arsenal are unbeaten under Mikel Arteta in the nine Premier League games that Granit Xhaka has started in. I thought he was great in the first half but actually quite average in the second half. His passing, though, his left foot range is sublime and he is incredibly useful in terms of trying to control a game. He is susceptible to mistakes. I don't think that's, I mean, even up for debate. And in my eyes, there are times when I see him a little bit like a David Luiz in midfield, just bound to make a mistake that ends up costing you. However, a 2-0 victory, a clean sheet, three points that put us ninth in the table Arsenal find themselves one point behind Sheffield United and two points behind Tottenham I've looked at the fixture list and Manchester United have the easiest run in out of any of the top six clubs however seven games left to play if Arsenal were to win five of them I think they'd be in with a shout because teams will drop points as we approach squeaky bum time. It's a big win for Arteta, and it's a big win for planet Earth as well. 3,000 trees will be planted, courtesy of your boy, Hector Verin. And a big moment today for Eddie Nketiah as well. His loan spell at Leeds United has only served to charge him up with hunger. He is tenacious. He is very quick. And I guess the youthful, energetic side of him is what's pushed him to the fore and St Lacazette banished to the bench. 
Here's a look at the lineups then. First start since 2017 for Emiliano Martinez. He played very well. Clean sheet as well. Beautiful. Hector Bellerin lost the ball 11 times in 33 minutes. Not his greatest performance. I hope it's just a question of him getting back to full fitness. Is he capable of concentrating? Is he good enough for this football club? He's certainly good for planet Earth, keeping it green, making sure that 3,000 trees are planted after the first Arsenal win since his promise. Ceballos didn't have the greatest game and didn't look that happy when he was pulled off. Granit Xhaka is absolutely integral to this side. We are finding that out. But one thing I would say is maybe that's the problem. Maybe the fact that we are so overly reliant on a player who has such limitations is one of the reasons that Arsenal are being held back so much. It was a big call from Arteta to leave Guendouzi out for attitude problems. There seems to be something amiss in their relationship. How much longer will the kid be there? Is it possible that he could be being moved on sooner than we thought? There was a period of time quite recently when people were saying he was worth 60 to 70 million. Is that still the case? How much do you think he's worth? Is he worth keeping? Is he an integral part of Arsenal's future? As I'm sure Eddie Nketiah and Joe Willock would like to prove themselves to be. And they did themselves no disservice today. Eddie Nketiah obviously getting the goal with the incredible high press, the energy. And Willock coming on and finishing the game, putting it to bed after Lacazette's shot was parried and he was the first to react. A very impressive performance from Robert Holding, who looks like a future captain. Is he the answer to Arsenal's defensive woes? I'm sure time will tell, but he seems to be building up some sort of partnership with Skodran Mustafi, who was good for the most, and Kieran Tierney, whose deliveries with that left foot are certainly going to be a source of creativity for the side that is much needed. People have been quite patient with him. I know he's got a mad injury record, but I'm hoping that there is a lot more to see from Tierney. Saka, we need to get tied down to a new contract, really, don't we? He is one of our best players. The fact that he's left-footed is such a massive advantage on this side. Whipping the balls in for Lacazette, Pepe, Aubameyang and Nketiah throughout the day and causing problems. For Southampton, obviously McCarthy made their big mistake. I'm a big fan of Bertrand and Redmond down this left-hand side and Ward-Prowse has got the quality to play for anyone in the country. Ings is just a revelation right now. He's clearly a quality player that just needed game time and some confidence and he gets goals and creates problems. And he was quite unlucky a couple of times today, bringing down a long ball from inside his own half. A beautiful first touch to set up, I think it was Bertrand or Redmond. Very creative, lively, physical, and always a source of problems for the opposition. It's great for Arsenal, really. As soon as Eddie and Ketia got the goal, Southampton's plan had to go out the window, and they had to come and get something from the game if they wanted anything from it. Arsenal more than happy under Arteta's instruction to sit back and wait for the chances, and they were rewarded with Willock's goal, wrapping the game up. Simple. This, however, is not the sum of Arsenal's problems. It's a nice little breather, a sign of hope for some youngsters, for sure. But there are problems at Arsenal that we need to talk about in a lot more detail. There are some serious warning signs that this club are in a lot of trouble. This will, however, be a massive confidence boost for Arteta and some of those youngsters out there. His first away win at the seventh attempt. Hopefully we do start to see things kick into gear now. Big game in the FA Cup this weekend against Sheffield United. And then it's back to the Emirates for a home tie against the basically relegated Norwich City. I don't want to see anything but three points and three more thousand trees or well, there's going to be a f***ing problem. That it. Okay. Love to your mothers. I hope she's well. Make sure you're subscribed if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen. But for now, I've been here with you and this has been a lot of fun. Peace.